In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about energy flow and food chains. My name's Trudy and I live in San Diego. San Diego is dry and hot for most of the year, but we have a lot of plants and animals that live here. This is a picture of one of our native um, habitats here in San Diego. It's called Chaparral. These systems of organisms that live together are called ecosystems, and all ecosystems require energy to function. Some of the topics that we're going to cover in this presentation are why is energy needed, where does the energy come from, what's an energy pyramid, what's a food chain, and what happens when an organism is removed. We're going to try and do some predictions about um, what would happen to a food chain if somebody was removed from the food chain. Why is energy needed? Well, all organisms need energy for growth, for repair of cells and tissues, since all organisms are built of cells. Reproduction, all organisms reproduce. They need energy to do that. Movement, did you know that even cells move around? It's true. All living things have some type of movement. And chemical production, all cells and all living things make loads and loads of chemicals. So where does the energy come from for all this activity? Well, the energy from most ecosystems on the planet comes from the sun. There's a few that don't use the sun, but most that we're going to be concerned with uh, use the sun's energy to start off their um, energy flow. So the energy from the sun comes to this planet in the form of photons and light energy. And plants can actually use photons to produce um, sugars, simple sugars. So they use these sugars to produce plant material and grow and reproduce. And primary consumers eat plant material and take the energy from that's stored in the plant material and use it to make, in this case, insect material. And as the insects eat the plants and use this energy to build up their bodies, they're eaten by other organisms, in this case a mouse. As the mouse takes in the energy from the insects that it eats, it also grows and is able to reproduce. So does all of the energy get used? Well, no, actually. Organisms are not very efficient at converting energy into biomass or tissues or reproduction. They, on average, lose about 90% at each level of a food chain. So the energy that's taken in by the plants uh, to grow and reproduce, of all that energy that's taken in, there's about a 90% loss. So only about 10% of that is available for the insects to eat. And of the energy that the insects take in from the plants, there's about a 90% loss there. So there's only 10% of that left over for the mouse. Which brings us to an energy pyramid. The energy pyramid shows the relationship between the amount of energy that's needed um, for each step in the energy pyramid. So we can use uh, units, we'll call them uh, energy units. If we start off with a thousand energy units that a plant takes in, the next step up as we go up the energy pyramid is the insect there would only be about 100 units left for the insects to take in of all that energy. As we go up the energy pyramid again to the mouse, there's only about 10 units left for the mouse to take in. So let's imagine an owl comes in and decides to eat the mouse. How many energy units would there be left for the owl to take in? If you said one unit, you were right. There's only one unit of energy left for the owls at this point. So a food chain is just another way to show the energy relationships in an ecosystem. In a food chain, we have the sun, which delivers energy in the form of photons to plants, which are consumed by primary consumers, like this grasshopper. The grasshopper is then consumed by a secondary consumer, which would be the black widow that we're showing here. 
the black widow is consumed by this mouse, and the mouse in turn is consumed by the coyote. When we get up to this level, um, we're at a quaternary consumer. The coyote would be a quaternary consumer. So a food chain is the simplest example of um, an energy, energy relationships in an ecosystem. A food web tries to be a little bit more specific and tries to show the energy relationships in an ecosystem in a more accurate way. However, this is a very, very simplistic way of showing energy relationships too because as you can see there's uh, no worms, no decomposers, and these relationships are extremely complex. So even a food web is just a simple way of showing energy relationships in an ecosystem. So what happens when an organism is removed from a food chain? Let's say a developer comes into our neighborhood and decides to build houses and take away the coyote's habitat. So we're going to remove the coyote completely from this food chain. What would happen to the rest of the organisms? What would happen to the mouse population? the spider population, the grasshopper population, and the plant population. Let's go ahead and take the coyote out. And what happens to the mouse population? The mouse population would increase because the coyotes aren't there to eat the mice. If the mouse population increases, they're going to affect the spider population. The spider population is probably going to go down because there are too many mice eating all of the spiders. So as that happens, that's going to negatively affect the mouse population. When the spiders are gone, the grasshopper population is going to get out of control. And this is often what happens when we have infestations of insects. The predators of these insects are taken out of the ecosystems with poisons or in some other way, and the pest insects become really, really populous because the predators aren't there to control them. So as the, the grasshopper population goes up, they're going to, of course, have a negative effect on the plant population. So the plant population is going to go down, and the grasshopper population is going to go way down. It's going to crash. So let's remove the spider from this food chain and what do you think is going to happen to the rest of the organisms in the food chain? So we take the spider out. What's going to happen to the mouse population? The mouse population is probably going to go down as well as the coyote population if this were you know, the only thing that they were dependent on eating. And if the spider population went down, the grasshopper population would go up, and the plant population would go down. Of course, it's a lot more complicated than that, but the take-home message here is each link in this food chain is important. And if you take one organism out, or if you disrupt the population of one organism, you're going to affect all the other organisms in the food chain. So let's summarize what we've learned. Energy is needed for life. Energy comes from the sun and continues up the food chain. An energy pyramid shows energy loss at each level of a food chain. A food chain is just another way to show the energy flow in an ecosystem. And of course, when one organism is removed from a food chain, it affects all the other organisms. This is really probably one of the most important uh, points here. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.